The Magic are always a challenging opposition. I mean, they've got a huge amount of experience there with a the number of silver ferns, girls in the team. Um, you know, at one end, Casey Williams, at the other end, Irene Van Dyke, um, you know, and in the midcourt, Laura Langman. Um, they're one of those teams that, you know, we love getting out there and competing against because, I mean, you want to be playing against the best players. The game looks as though it's going to be full of surprises. Traditionally, Waikato and Canterbury have always had a really strong rivalry. Uh, and it has made for some great matches, some great match-ups. They've always had quite star players in both teams, so it's always been games that the audiences have really been involved and really love to watch. Saturday afternoon, ANZ Championship Netball, and we're at Mystery Creek in Hamilton, where the home side, the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic, for the second time this year, come up against a red and black tactics team struggling to find form in 2010. Good afternoon, it's great to have your company as we kickstart round nine of this ANZ competition here in Hamilton. And Catherine Harvey-Williams, you'd expect the Magic will just be hoping to come away unscathed in this game, considering last week that season-ending injury to Peter Scholes. Yes, you would, but there's more on the line for them than that, Annie. They really need to concentrate on getting some percentage and building that because they want to finish in the top two to get a double chance, so they need to forget about Peter Scholes and they need to concentrate on putting four good quarters together. The tactics, they've had their fair share of injuries too this year, so it's great to see the likes of Anna Galvin back in the mix today. They really need someone like that, Annie. She's got experience and they're the second-worst defensive combination in the competition, so they needed to do something, so it is nice to see someone like Anna Galvin back, who's been out of action since round two with a wrist injury. Well, let's take a look and see all the live netball coming your way over round nine. And well, after today's game here in Hamilton, we head across the Tasman where the Adelaide Thunderbirds take on the out of form Melbourne Vixen side. And then Monday night netball, we head up to Auckland where the Mystics will, I'm sure, be buoyed by their steel win in Invercargill last week as they take on the Central Pulse. And the last game of the round, the front runners, the New South Wolves, New South Wales Swifts take on the Firebirds. And to the points table, well, it stays the same after for another week. The Swifts, Magic, and Vixens fill the first three spots. Then in fourth position, well, we have four teams sitting on eight points, so pretty congested there in the middle of the table, and well, with one win in this ANZ competition, the Tactics find themselves in ninth position. OK, Kath, the Pulse pushed the Magic last week, so by no means was it a polished performance from the Magic. Do you think it's an opportunity here today for the Tactics to hit them while they're feeling a little bit vulnerable? Oh, without question, the Tactics are a competitive unit for a half or three quarters. If they can string four quarters together, then they will push the Magic, because the Magic's downfall all season, and in previous years, has been the consistency that they've lacked. Well, let's head outside now where our match commentator Andrea McVeigh is making her way inside the stadium. How's it going, Reg? Well, Annie, I've headed outside because I thought I might be able to get a tan and look like one of the Thunderbirds. Jokes aside, I am outside here at Mystery Creek. Great to see the crowds turning out. Even though the Waikato Bay Plenty Magic are playing a lowly side, you could say, in the Canterbury Tactics. And Annie, you have to say that this is a game that will well and truly belong to the Magic. They've faced off five times in ANZ, and the Magic have won all five, average margin of ten goals. So, Magic all the way, and time for me to go get a hot dog. Yeah, cheeky little hot dog. Righto, we're off for a quick breather now. But to take you to the break, let's take a look at the very proud record that the Magic hold over the tactics in the Fisher & Paykel head-to-head. The head-to-head -head is proudly brought to you by Fisher & Paykel. They want to end the set with shooting. Oh. to give an inch or a centimetre. A lovely pass from Thompson, weighted beautifully. Welcome back to Mystery Creek as we build up to live netball here on Sky Sport between the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic and the Canterbury Tactics. And Kath, this tactic side have only won one game this whole year. Hard to believe. For a province that prides itself on its sporting culture, they're failing miserably, aren't they? It's all been downhill since you left the Manny. But no, in all seriousness, yes, they do have a lot of pride in their region and they wouldn't be used to being in this situation. So what they need to do is to find that competitive nature and that pride that that region represents and put it out on court. 
Well, let's take a look and see what players will be putting it out on court today. And, well, you'd have to say, Kath, wholesale changes right from the goal shoot through to the goal keep position. Yeah. They're coming off a bye, Annie, so it's almost like they've decided to start afresh with a revamped lineup. Anna Galvin's coming in after six weeks on the sideline with a broken wrist. She'll be an acquisition for them. Kite has moved out to goal defence. Marie Bowden finds herself in her familiar position of wing attack with Finch and Cross in the midcourt. And the shooters, everyone will be surprised to see Ange Mitchell out there at goal attack. It's a pretty short shooting circle, so they'll want to be accurate here this afternoon, she and Anna Thompson. And we might see some changes if they're struggling against a credible magic lineup. Well, let's head down courtside where Andrew McVeigh is with the coach of the tactics, Helen Marn Stroud. Well, Helen, I'm guessing it was a pretty good time for you to have had a bye. Take stock, start again. Yeah, absolutely. It gives us that time to really look back at the, the first six, seven weeks of our. A competition so to say and as you see you know we've made some positive changes and we're looking forward to you know really consolidating what we need to do in the second half of the competition. Anna Galvin back, Angela Mitchell gets to start at goal attack, good changes? Yeah really great and really good to have those options available. Wonderful, best of luck Helen, thanks. thanks. Well, Kath Marie Bowden, she's made herself unavailable for Silver Fern. So I guess for the second half of this competition, she'll just be getting out there and having a bit of fun. Yeah, and she's had a pretty solid season already, Annie, in a team that has been struggling. She's a very energetic player. She likes to look long into the circle, but she just has to be careful with Casey Williams hovering in the back there for the magic. And Philippa Finch, the other mid-quarter for the tactics, is showing her versatility here this afternoon. Has been playing predominantly at wing attack, and today she finds herself in its centre. Yes, they don't call her the Finchinator for nothing, Annie. She's a pretty solid competitor, very good defensive centre. She'll just need to be polished as an attacking centre player this afternoon. Well, to the magic now, and it's been a rough old week for Nolene Tarua and her troops saying goodbye to one of their starting seven players, Peter Schultz. Let's take a look and see who will be replacing her, and well, no surprises, Jody Todd moves across, and YTT starts at goal keep. Yes, they may well try a number of combinations here this afternoon to see if they can cover Schultz. They'll certainly miss her, but it's still a solid defensive combination there. Waititi is very experienced. She's played for the Pulse and the Tactics before, so she'll combine well with Williams. Again, solid in the midcourt. Jodie Todd moves into Scholz's position, and she did a reasonable effort against the Pulse last week. Solia was outstanding last week against the Pulse. I want her to continue on there. And Jodie Brown of Van Dyke. Van Dyke's in good form. Jodie Brown has been in good form, but was taken off the court against the Pulse last week, so she'll be keen to put in a good performance this afternoon. Tanya Lund could um, find herself out in court some stage as well. Oh, well, let's head back courtside where Andrew McVeigh is with, with the coach of the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic, Nolene Taroa. Well, Nolene, what a week. Peter Scholl's out, but you've juggled your lineup. You're happy with how it's sort of repositioned? Yeah, we've got three options that's possible out there, and giving Kahu a go or an opportunity is exciting. She's been biting at the bit for a long time, so now it's her turn to get out there. And Tactics, a team that you'd underestimate at your peril? Yeah, definitely. Canterbury in style, do the things well, so it's going to be a big game. All right, thanks, Nolz. Good luck. Thank you. Well, you alluded to it earlier, Kath. Kahurangi YTT. She's played for a couple of franchises. She's not Casey Williams, but she gets in there and muscles up, and this is her chance to shine. And she competes very well when she has been called upon YTT. The big question here this afternoon is she's against a mobile shooter in Thompson, so it'll be interesting to see how she handles that. And Frances Solia, well, she's had a bit of a mi mixed bag in terms of her own performance throughout the ANZ competition, but last week was outstanding, more so defensively. Yes, and you're only good as your last performance. Her defensive effort was excellent for someone who's as short as she is, but her drives onto the circle edge were outstanding, and they'll certainly miss this lady, Peter Scholes. Yeah, they certainly will. Well, we are moments away from game time here at Mystery Creek. We're going to duck away to the break, though. Before we do, there's no denying the strength of this tactic side over the past few years has been in their midcourt with the likes of Seymour and Bowden. And this year, Philippa Finch is thrilled to be playing alongside Bowden and now under the tutelage of Julie Seymour. It's been an evolutionary year for the Canterbury Tactics, a midcourt without veteran silver firm Julie Seymour. But while Seymour's not on court, those who are have been nicely influenced by their now assistant coach. She's got so much knowledge, you just have to soak it up and listen to everything she's got. Um, it's great, it's one of the best things that you can have in a, in a team. She's been to those top competitions where she's learnt plenty of um, netball skills, so she definitely shares those. And as well as having different coaches, she can share her knowledge from the different coaches that she's had as well. So she's got plenty to share. Oh, Finch! Finch and Schultz having a good old go in there. Without Seymour, Finch has had a challenging season, fine-tuning her combination in the midcourt with former Fern Marie Bowden. 
We're getting better, yeah. Obviously, we've had um, New Zealand Day experience together and we've had the last three years. So, yes, it's getting, it's getting great, our combinations and our communication together. She's very in intense with her aerobic endurance. Um, she's intense with everything that she does um, and she's a great role model. Mystery Creek in Hamilton where the second place Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic will have to regather today. They've had a stop take week and now need to deliver against the beleaguered tail enders of Canterbury Tactics. And former Australian captain Catherine Harvey Williams might be down but are never really out. No, they come from a strong sporting region, Andrea, with a lot of pride. They're wanting to put in a competitive performance this afternoon and I think they would have taken a lot of heart from the Pulsar's push against the Magic last week. And with our sideline and commentary, former firms captain Anna Stanley and the big question this afternoon, Anna, the Magic this week lost for the season, their inspirational import, Peter Scholes. What impact that Ladies loss, Anna? Oh, look, I, think, I think she'll be a huge loss to this Magic outfit. Um, you know, not only has it been a hard week for her, but I'm sure Knowles and her teammates, no one likes to see a player finish their season with, a, with an injury like Pete had, and I think we won't know the real effects until today's game. Here come the Canterbury tactics, out onto centre court at Mystery Creek. And I guess the surprise selection really from coach Helen Mann Stroud, Angela Mitchell starting hit goal attack. Yeah, look, they don't have a lot of height in that shooting circle and their shooting percentage this year hasn't been great, so they'll certainly need to be on target because otherwise the legs of likes of White Titi and Williams will swallow up those rebounds. Well, the roar of the crowd's deafening at Mystery Creek as they welcome the home side, the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic. And they too have a rejiggled starting seven. Jody Todd goes to a wing defence, which means Casey Williams out at goal defence and free to go hunting. Yes, we love to see her out there, don't we? She settles into that position very well, but I expect that during the course of the game they will make a change to see what the best combination is now that they haven't got Peter Scholes for the rest of the season. Well, the umpires for this match, Bobby Brown and Christy Simpson, and the ball deliverers, identical twins, Brooke and Meg Walden. They go to South Wales School in Hamilton, and Laura Langman's their favourite player, so they'll be tickled pink to be delivering the ball to her. Now, we saw last week the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic. They didn't really peak against the Central Pulse, and they're in a similar situation this week against the Tactics. Yeah, it was a pretty flat performance by them, particularly from the start. They want to get off to a better start here here this afternoon, so otherwise the tactics could push them. Well, we have a start. Mystery Creek, Hamilton, Waikato Bay, Plenty Magic hosting the Canterbury Tactics. Yes. Todd, the throw-in, so it was a sloppy start, Magic. They want to settle into their work quickly. Todd used again. And Solia straight down the sideline, Irene Fundyke. Any good form fan diet, shooting up a great deal of volume with a great deal of accuracy as she has for years. Jody Brown puts the first one on the board. Tactics now Bowden and Thompson quickly into their business. And good to see Bowden back in her familiar position at wing attack, so I'm sure she'll be a real strength off the line for the tactics. As is her feeding into the circle. Angela Mitchell, stealth on the baseline, has the penalty. Makes the most of it. Nice start for Mitchell, called into the squad following Chelsea Pittman's season-ending injury. And has settled in nicely. Careful progress. Again, Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic. They use Todd and Williams. Nothing wrong with that, though. Langman sets the penalty, puts the bomb in. Take a shot. <laughs> and why not? She was barely in the circle, Jody Brown. She'll be keen to have a good game this week. Brown taken off the court last week against the Pulse. And Lund actually performed pretty well when she came on. Off the rim, Anna Galvin scavenges nicely. Fantastic to see Anna Galvin back on court. She's been out for, what is it? Eight years out of the game at the elite level, so she'll be keen to put in a good performance. Been missing in action following a broken wrist in round two, so it wasn't the return she had hoped for. But for those eight years, she wasn't just doing nothing. She had three children and was playing a bit of club netball, so she's kept her finger on the pulse. She tries to milk the penalty, <laughs> does Anna Galvin. Tactics should feel a little bit rejuvenated following the bye. They've had a tough six weeks, not winning a game. 
Yeah, These that. contrasting stories, isn't it? Six losses in a row, the tactic, six wins in a row, the magic. As Mitchell now resets, offloads. And Thompson converts in the unfamiliar position today in a Thompson of goal shoot. But I guess the Canterbury Tactics coach, Helen Manstrad, had to try something different. Nothing quite going right for her side so far this season. Langman and Van Dyke give and get. Scrappy, though. That's what Galvin will bring, though. She'll bring a competitive nature, have a go at everything. And it's interesting, this combination of Mitchell and Thompson. Generally, you have a tall and a short in the circle, but they've got two mobile shooters, which could be a positive for the Tactics. Tactics throw in, Mitchell will take it baseline. Good, simple stuff, Canterbury Tactics. Finished nicely, Anna Thompson. She really won't know what to do with herself back there. She's played at goal attack all season. And it won't be that easy for Waititi. She would prefer the holder and the high ball. It's not a bad strategic move by Marne Stroud, especially if they shoot the ball through the hoop. Mitchell dances along the baseline again. Pretty solid start, this tactic side, they lead four to two. Magic now, Laura Langman, good skills, amazing footwork on the run. Terrific work by Van Dyke, so quick. Both defenders out, so it should be easy for Van Dyke, and it is. Interested spectator in the Silver Ferns coach, Ruth Aiken. Oh, terrific work, Lemon. She read that really well. Head bowed and covered completely. Such a complete player, Laura Langman. She goes again and again. Mm. Better ball speed from the Magic here. Just letting the ball go. Have to go through the hoop, though. And Galvin, good rebounding so far for the Tactics. Her team's quickly through court. And what I like about this tactic side is they can, when they get the ball through court, they can bring it down with such speed. It's just when they get it in the circle, the shooters for them this year haven't been performing, but today they've started strong. Just over 10 minutes remaining first quarter. Mystery Creek and Hamilton, 5-3 to three it is. The visiting side, the Canterbury Tactics, coming off a bye week. Just two ahead. Of the best New Zealand side in ANZ, the Magic. Tony Brown, though, right under the post, gets one back. And penalties already, gosh. The tactics heavily penalised. Finch now. No, inside the circle, so Kahu Waititi will stand down inside the circle. Anna Thompson sets and offloads to Ange Mitchell. So the combination between Ange Mitchell and Anna Thompson looking pretty promising at this stage. And the reason for that, Andrew, is because they won't ask for much high ball. They'll want it low and they'll want it straight and sharp. And that's difficult for Williams and Waititi to counteract. But the feed from the magic. Sensational. And Irene Van Dyke. Gives the pass a round of applause, and it deserved one. It was special stuff, Jody Brown. Yeah, it seems like that's part of the game plan, to release the ball quickly in the attacking third. The tactics don't quite have the luxury of having a tall timber in the back to be able to do that. And you can see here they're working it around a lot more, having to use the, the triangles and, and make the ball do the work for them. Langman's out, penalised, and Finch stays low. Too many, and Kahu YTT picks up the scraps. Magic fly through court. <laughs> Ping pong. Off the foot of Edge Mitchell. Yeah, poor bounce from Thompson. He's got to shoot those up. Yeah, that was a sign of someone who's been out of the game for a little while. Just that she knew it was coming, Galvin, but she just couldn't position her body to take a clean intercept. It was a missile fired by Jodie Todd, that's for sure. Penalty now. <laughs> Jodie Brown not quite sure whether she's going to shoot, but she does. And she's good. Okay, 
So the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic take the lead for the first time. Nice baseline drive from Mitchell. A nice completion. If they can maintain the accuracy, the tactics, mm. they'll get enough ball to compete here with the Magic. Yeah, that's that's the big big ask of this tactic side because I think bringing the ball through court, they are just as good as this Magic side. It's, it's totally all about the percentage in the circle. Down the other end, you know, Van Dyke will make the most of every ball she gets. Romping along at the moment, the Magic on attack. That's for sure, but so too the tactics as Mitchell goes again. Casey Williams gobbles up the rebound. Bowed in a hand to it. And it's the strong mid-court zone that we've seen all season from the Canterbury Tactics, and that's what it promotes. Charlotte Kite through for the intercept. They go again. Finch finds Thompson, cross the circle. Thompson has been solid for the Tactics all year. She's been their main strike weapon. But that's what happens when you've got short, short shooters. You miss one. Hard to get the rebound. And when you've got to shoot over the long oh. levers of someone like Casey Williams. The best rebounder in the competition. Yeah, yeah. Jodie Brown now, the throw in. Looks straight to her oh, sidekick, oh, Irene Van Dyke. Oh, yeah. Yes, well done, fight. And smart work, Brown. Crowd love it. Can't teach what Brown just did then. She just knew that Van Dyke was free, tapped it over the top. Francis Solia now. There's that quick feed that we've been put talking about. Kite penalised though, so here goes Jodie Brown. Bowed and strong on the centre pass. Back at wing attack for this match. And having a ball there. Good use of the angles. And it'll be interesting to see how this defensive combination of YTT and Williams develops. Just setting the penalty. The umpire's just making it clear to Casey Williams to move Stand half an inch to the side <laughs> and away still that's her job and her prerogative 10 to 8 two goals in it just under five minutes left in the first spell and there's an unusually stray pass from the magic so another turnover yeah. tactics and opportunity sometimes you can get overconfident too andrea that release of brown looked like a confident pass but there was just a misunderstanding with solia kite now Finds Bowden. So good straight lines again, tactics. Offside the call. And patient work through that mid-court zone Canterbury tactics. Laura Langman's yeah, great footwork. footwork. Beautiful to watch, magic. She's dancing all over the place, isn't she, Annie? Well, it was, a, it was a great move. She had to do it to get that front cut so she'd get the space forward, which is what she did. Yeah, they've made a couple of crucial mistakes. Bowden breaking. Can't afford to do that against the lights of the Magic. Tactics back to man on man defence. Let's see what pressure they can apply. Brown's through. And her combination with Laura Langman really is a joy to watch. They reset, use Williams on the transverse line. Watch the release, it's just so quick. Catch and release, catch and release. Sounds like a fishing plan. Yeah, Brown. Every time a coconut, get it to Brown, Brown feeds to Van Dyke. So if they want to shut down that ball into Van Dyke, shut down Brown. And Galvin looks like she's time getting a bit of ice on that old wrist of hers that she broke might just need a time out there at goal keep a bit of a, a, bit of a break oh, i'm sure she'll be feeling the effects after sitting on the beach for the last five or six weeks and Annie, you've had a lot to do with anna galvin as a player her re-injection into the side they've had six straight losses how 
influential will she be within that team unit? Oh, you couldn't want anyone better than Banana to come into the mix. She is someone that just has the most amazing enthusiasm and passion for the game. And, and she's got a huge amount of experience for someone that's only, what is she, 31? Um, so, yeah, great to have her on the side. Yeah, so they should be happy with the start too, the tactics. They are down by three goals, but they're competitive. They don't look out of place. They've just made a couple of crucial mistakes that they need to fix, and then they're certainly well in this game. And I think they would have taken a lot of heart from the Pulse's performance against the Magic last week when they only went down by 12 goals. You'd have to say, Kat, though, some ominous signs, signs from the Swiker at Bay of Fendi Magic side. The combination between Brown and Van Dyke just amazing, sublime at times. Now, I think you can see what they've been practicing during the week is just to have a good understanding to try and release the ball as quickly as possible so that the heads of the defenders are down so that is very hard to counter out. But at the same time, they need to make sure that their error cap, their turnover count isn't high. Play resumes and Jody Brown quickly notches up another one for the Magic. Just over three minutes left. First quarter. Coming to you live from Hamilton. There's the bullet pass again. Jody Brown stunning. She's going to spend a lot of time clapping today, I think, Irene Van Dyke. Langman's feeds into the circle really improving. It's pretty good too from Finch. Yeah, Spot anything, on. Anything you can do, I can do better, say the tactics. Thompson looks warily behind her for the mighty arms of Casey Williams. She's free, so magic again. Langman charges. Yeah, they need to stay on to that, the tactics. The give and go is being used a lot by the magic here. Nothing you can do about that. Yeah. And that's a confident feed from Langman. Normally we don't see those until later on in the match where she builds her confidence a bit, so it's great to see she's letting it go into Irene early on in the match. And there's that, no pun intended, but that magic five-goal buffer. And we're not even at the end of the first spell. Thompson, though, doing a great job back at goal shoot. Adds another for the tactics. Brown, wing attack side. Good straight lines magic this time. So much in their repertoire. That I'm not sure if that was brilliant or just lucky. <laughs> I'd say lucky. I think it was a combination of everything. But they're certainly playing a lot better this Magic side than what they put out in the first half last week against the Pulse. So you'd have to say they've polished up a little bit. <laughs> a spectacular passage of play. They are looking like a top two side this week. Last week they certainly were far from it. Difficult situation last week, though. You lose a player like Scholes, your team's shell-shocked, and you're against the bottom side in the championship. Van Dyke. Quite brilliant. It's the brilliance of Casey Williams. Nice and steady. Gains her composure and releases. She's obviously been going with Pilates. Very delicate balance. Delicate balance, too, from Jody Todd. You could tell out at wing defence. Just teetering on the circle edge, making sure she didn't go offside. Wow. Langman having a fine game so far. And Annie, as a mid-quarter, we've seen such an improvement this year, Laura Langman, in her feeding. What goes into that? Well, I think at trainings, I know from playing with, with Langman before, she does look into, into Irene a lot. She practices those feeds a lot. And I think it's just a confidence thing. Um, she would probably be the first to admit that she's a, a defensive centre, and so to have that natural ability to feed into the circle, it, it doesn't come naturally for her, but look, she's certainly improving with each game and has put in some fantastic feeds. Well, this stands her a play a result of the defensive centre getting her hand to it so quickly down the other end. Magic. And now the penalty, Van Dyke. They've scored the last four goals. So what a strong close to the first 15 minutes. They lead the visitors, the Canterbury Tactics, by 18 to 10. Back with second quarter action live shortly. Sky Sports, stay where you are.
to create the pressure off the horse. Good stuff on those last couple that they last five minutes. Remember, the horse is going to go to the horse to because they don't want the ball up to the Well, it'll give us time to set it up down there. So, really good talk outside the circle. Get the links connected. I think you guys, you just need to stay on here. I know she's coming out a lot. We need these guys to shut down the top of the circle. So, hopefully, we bring that defence and stop her running out all the time. So, what do we need to do? Getting set for the start of the second spell at Mystery Creek in Hamilton, where it's the home side, Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic. Absolutely dominant after the first 15, 18 to 10. They lead the visitors, the Canterbury Tactics. And we've had a change. Laura Langman's changed her hairstyle. It was in the long pony, and now it's in the bun. Astute expert comments from former Australian captain Catherine Harvey Williams. Thank you so much. Her pony is getting long these days, so it might have been bothering her. Second spell underway here in Hamilton. And this Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic side looking ominous. Solia combining beautifully with her mid-court buddy. Hand to it, Philippa Finch. Oh, oh unlucky. Lucky. That's how it's rolled all day for the Canterbury Tactics. Nothing really going their way. Jody Brown, stunning. Playing a lot of confidence, Brown. Finch calling for time. Obviously hurt herself in that little bit of little bit of skirmish. Or well, she too may want to change her ponytail. Our first two minute injury break up the quarter. She looks like a tough customer. She looks so she's just, with the got winded. Taking a bit of a blow. Difficult situation for the Canterbury Tactics. What, they're nine down now. What do you say? Yeah, they need to get off to a good start here. Otherwise, this game could be a blowout. And they were competing quite well early on, but I guess the Magic needed time to settle with this combination without Shoals. But they're coming on nicely and moving the ball at such great, great speed in that attacking circle that the Tactics really need to keep their heads up. Such a different game to the one which we saw the Magic play last week. They looked very flat against the Pulse. They're on fire this week. And, they are. and the challenge now, Andrea, is for the Magic to keep it up for the entire duration of the game. It's not often you see a complete performance by this quality side. So maybe this afternoon we'll see it. The biggest, I think the biggest difference from last week with this Magic side is that they're letting the ball go. They're playing with ball speed and they just get their flow on attack a lot easier and look sharper and look confident and they've, they've certainly started this game with that confidence. Tracy Fair and Ruth Aiken, Silver Ferns coach and the High Development Officer for Netball New Zealand. Tracy Fair. They'll be looking closely at some of the players out here. Jodie Brown, Anna Thompson. Philippa Finch might be in the mix now with no Bowden. Tactics front line certainly combined well to get the ball into Andrew Mitchell. Shooting position, capitalises. Jodie Brown on the wing attack side again. So plenty of variety in the Magic game and solely a circle edge. She's finding the circle edge so easily this afternoon. Yeah, she's continued on from last week. That's what she was so effective at finding the circle edge, but not only the circle edge, but the top of the circle, which is the best place to be. This line, cut Jody Brown, and she scavenges her own rebound. Well, That's the sort of defence we expect from oh, Casey Williams oh. back at goal keep. Unlucky Van Dyke, she batted it twice, I think. No, throw one. There we go, she's been copying Casey Williams, Kahu YTT. Beautiful timing, beautiful vision. I guess when you get the opportunity, Andrew, you've got to make the most of it. There's been a lot of talk about Eli Shadrock perhaps getting a start at wing defence. So maybe we might see her for the second half. And I certainly think that's an op option that, that Nolene Taroa can look at so that she can keep Williams and Todd in the circle because they have been playing extremely well this year. And move someone like Shadrock to Windy. Jody Todd now for the Magic uses Williams, so just resetting on the transverse line, the Magic. Good patient stuff. Good punch 
Kochi attack, this time from the Canterbury Tactics. Oh, brilliant Lane Williams. Yeah. All over Ange Mitchell, there was nowhere she could go. Well, that's where Thompson needed to be an option, and she needed to pop. Mitchell wasn't confident putting that ball up. Brilliant pass. The rebounding from the Tactics is pretty poor. They at least need to contest. Excellent work with Maggie, they look hot. So with just 12 minutes remaining till half time, there's the 10 goal cushion. So the magic relentless here this afternoon and Van Dyke's about to add another and does. Finch now, her team playing catch up. Pretty difficult team to chase too, the magic. Thompson and Bowden combine well. Pocket to head of the circle. What they need to concentrate on the tactics is the timing. When you've got short shooters, they pop out in front, but the timing has to be spot on so that you can release it. And you talked about how the Waikato Bay Plenty Magic defensive combination needed to adjust and, and accommodate the fact that they were against a, a shorter shooting combination. They sure have. Brown tries the long shot. Not quite there. And in the scramble, the ball's off a tactics hand, so Magic throw in. Solia hurls it across oh. the circle, and there's that pass again. Full of pass. And Galvin knows it, her head was down, and Langman took every opportunity. And it's a tough ask for Galvin. She's a very good player, but she's been out of action for six weeks, and you need some game time to really get your timing and understanding going. And she certainly hasn't had the chance to do that. And even just your match fitness, you lose that so quickly, don't you? You need that at goalkeeper. Wow. No. <laughs> Steady on, you two. <laughs> Meantime, the magic just keep on keeping on. 24 to 14. Wow. Nice use of the fake from Langman. Nice ball speed, nice angles. Magic on fire here this afternoon, folks. Yes, this is what we were expecting last week against the Pulse. The Polish performance. Didn't get it, but looks like it's here today. Ange Mitchell sneaks along the baseline, and she's good for the shot. And that's how she plays, Mitchell. She just slithers around on the court, and you can hardly see her because she's so white. <laughs> She should have gone to Bali with the Thunderbirds. <laughs> oh. So a netball spectacle. This Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic team really delivering some spectacular netball. You've got to feel sorry for the tactics. They're doing their best, this time through Thompson, who makes good. 26 to 16, and Jody Brown on fire, this combination in the front line. Too easy. Yeah, Brown getting the front cut every time. And the speed which is coming through the midcourt is just hard to stop, so the midcourters for the tactics need to somehow try and stamp their authority and just slow down the pace, otherwise there's nothing those circle defenders can do. Good combination, circle edge, and, and Mitchell has a go. Nothing quite falling right for the tactics though, and now it's the magic flying through court. Solia goes, goes again. Yeah, that was a great pass from Todd. She set that, that ball through court. Looked over the mess. Oh. Someone rejected Irene Van Dyke's shot. You don't see that very often. Right. Laura Langman tries to spoil, but the tactics just keep on going. And Mitchell finds her circle mate. Lovely combination. And the centre pass tactic, so... No. <laughs> the umpire's fooled you. <laughs> so Langman, how is that? Almost stunning, but Charlotte Kite snaffles. Mitchell wing attack side, and Thompson finds Bowden. Never stops working, Bowden. What you want from one of your leaders. Good offload from Mitchell to Thompson. Who can blame her? There's the long arms of yeah. Casey Williams. And that's what they have to do. They've got to work for each other in there. Shoot the shots up quick before Casey Williams gets her distance. Because she is just a, a tower over them. 
positive for the tactics. Well read by Kite. Another chance for the visitors. And another conversion. So the tactics have scored the last three goals, a mini surge from the visitors. Contact Kite, she had to give Solia a grounding room. Well, Marta Solia dips her head because that was a shocking pass. And this is where the Magic let themselves down. They've been outstanding, but there's been a poor pass from Brown, a poor pass from Solia, and suddenly the tactics have scored four goals in a row, and it's their, now their centre pass. Yeah, now it really is their centre pass. And it's magnificent to see the fight left in this tactic side as well. They get a sniff, and they go for it. Finch now. And Bowden in the pocket, so... That strong combination between the three players who've played so much together, Thompson, Bowden and Finch. Over those levers of Williams. Nice option there, Thompson stepping back, so she's certainly looking at lots of different options to try and shoot over Casey Williams. Wonderful skills, Irene Thunder. Nanny, your sideline, this crowd going off. Yeah, there's, there's certainly a lot of support here for the Magic, and I'm sure they're loving the performance that the Magic side have put out so far. Jodie Todd this time, hand to it. And stunning skills. You just run out of superlatives for this Magic side. Solia centre pass again. She's done a ton of work at centre pass time. Yeah. Oh, Kite <laughs> standing behind Van Dyke. <laughs> You're not going to get many balls from standing behind. And Jodie Brown's work on the baseline. She might as well just put her name on it. You wouldn't find many other goal attacks in New Zealand at the moment that could feed Van Dyke as well as Brown does. Certainly got a good combination going. Good feed meantime by the women wearing red and black. So it's the same margin that we saw at quarter time. 30 to 22, eight goals in it. Langman drives, drives again. So you've got to give some credit to the tactics side. The Magic have looked on fire, but they haven't run away with it so far in the second quarter. Such a proud netball province, Canterbury, and surrounds this tactics side. And Van Dyke, the shooting machine. Another one through. So just over four and a half minutes remaining until half time. 31 to 22, Magic ahead. But the tactics still very much in this game. Great passing cut from Bowden onto the super ledge. It's all about shooting though, isn't it, for the tactics. They're staying in this because they're accurate this afternoon, but for most part of the season, they've been down in the 70s. Turnover from a silly little mistake in the magic. They really just charge through court. Now the drive from Langman, she's on song to this afternoon. As is Jodie Brown. They just look sharper. They look like they've had the bye round the magic, not the tactics. They look crisp with their movements. They're doing work off the ball and in return they've got the flow. And then they do that. Mm. And the tactics are straight down the sideline. Good pass, Crofts. Nice work, tactics. Keep the ball low. That's the message. Oh. Another squandered opportunity, tactics. And the Magic are just so quick to get the ball down to their own end. Topsy turvy. It's almost like someone's thrown out a dose of the dropsies. You don't want to be too critical of the Magic because they are putting in some lovely ball, but to win this competition, you need to be crisp at all times. And I think at this stage, they still make too many simple errors at the wrong time. Jodie Todd, the replacement player for Peter Scholes at wing defence. She spent most of the season at goal defence. Going well there, though. Yeah, not too bad. You never notice wing defences, no. do you? They sort of do all the foiling. Said like a true goal defender. <laughs> That's why I'm surprised they've persevered with this line out down the defence end. I think they would have found a new wing defence and kept the combination in the circle with Williams and um, Todd. 
because you can do without a win defence every now and again. Not against the big games, you can't. Ask Peter Scholes yeah. that. <laughs> Two and a half minutes to out till half time now, and the tactics just sneaking up on the magic. Brown looks in, opts instead for Solia. And Kite and Galvin just starting to warm into their work. They're being so disruptive. Offload to Van Dyke. Easy stuff. Bowden, circuit edge. Had a much better quarter of the tactics, just down by one goal. After going down by eight in the first quarter. So it's a good comeback. Yeah, well done. Good call. Jodie Brown got pulled for contact, moving into the defender. She had her grounded feet there first, and she moved into it. It's interesting to see if the Magic do make a change at half-time and bring Shadrock on at wing defence, so that they can just see how that combination works. Good offload. Well, I guess, Kath, if they've got a good lead, it would be an opportunity for Knowles to get her on. And the Magic, that just snaffled every rebound in that circle. Casey Williams, amazing. Langman now recovers nicely. Oh, I think that's what you call a scramble, and it's the tactics who come up with it. Crofts now, no one home. Well read, Langman. Bread and butter intercept, but great timing nonetheless. And finished off spectacularly by Jodie Brown. <laughs> In a rush to try and score a goal, Bowden's let go of a ball that gave her team no chance, but it gives the Magic a chance to score one final goal in this quarter. And Croft's hanging up. So quite a good zone set up by the tactics, but gee, the Magic just looked right over the top. I think the tactics then in every position got caught watching, chasing. And achieving nothing. Magic are going where they want to go, when they want to go. And scoring at will thanks to the smiling face of Irene Van Dyke. Laura Langman cleverly hangs on to the ball, and that means the pass won't be taken. So it's been a topsy-turvy second quarter. The margin was eight at quarter time. At half time, it'll be ten. The home side, the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic, ahead of the visitors, the Canterbury Tactics, 35 to 25. Back shortly to wrap up the first half action. Time at Mystery Creek in Hamilton, where it's 35 to 25. The home side, the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic, ahead of the visitors, the Canterbury Tactics. And Catherine Harvey Williams has been a comprehensive display, and you'd have to say led by the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic defenders. Casey Williams combining this week with Kahu YTT with success. Yes, but there was a change up obviously in the defensive circle because of Peter Scholes' injury, but they started off the game a little bit slowly. Waititi and Williams just trying to get a feel for one another. But then they started to reel their opponents in. And I thought the movement of Mitchell and Thompson would be a struggle for them, but they counteracted that. But then they fell away a little bit in that second quarter, particularly Waititi. She let Thompson roam free a little bit. Um, but the shooting of the tactics in terms of percentage has been pretty good, considering the fact that they're in their low 70s as an average during the course of the season. Certainly party time here at halftime at Mystery Creek in Hamilton. Liana Debrain, one of the interested spectators, talking there to former Magic player Nicola Pettit, another one of the stars, well, a current Magic mid-quarter and sideline, and a standing Laura Langman's performance today, utterly spectacular. Yeah, she's certainly uh, been on fire, Langman, and there we just saw her feeds in particular to Van Dyke. She's, she's got them spot on, and normally we don't see those long balls into Van Dyke until maybe the third or fourth quarter, but she's, she's looking long straight away which shows she's confident and just her movement she's, she's getting onto the circle edge which is prime feeding position and playing with confidence which is great to see. 
There's a very special combination developing as Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic side. Might have looked a bit flat last week against the Central Pulse, but they've been on fire this afternoon so far anyway against the Canterbury Tactics. It's half time and the Magic are 10 ahead. As the entertainment continues at Mystery Creek, 35 to 25 it is Magic ahead of the Tactics. We're back on the other side with the third quarter live on Sky Sport. Thirty-five to twenty-five is the score. Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic over the Canterbury Tactics here at Mystery Creek in Hamilton and Catherine Harvey Williams. When you crunch the numbers, I know that the score is the most important number and there's ten in it. But the Magic utterly dominant. Really a great display here so far this afternoon. Particularly that first quarter where they were shot eighteen to ten. But you look at the goal percentage. At least the Tactics are shooting in almost the mid eighties. Their average for the season is seventy four percent. So they're sort of in this game, but they need to have a big third quarter and the intercepts dominated by the magic there and I expect that they'll continue on there. The tactics need to secure ball a little bit more if they're going to challenge the magic here. Irene Puntyke and Jody Brown certainly on fire as far as their shooting numbers go and pre pretty good numbers both sides when you look at the shooting stats. Yeah look apart from the first quarter it was just a blowout to the magic but then the tactics sort of held it together but excellent shooting Anna Thompson really came into the game in that second half putting up 10 shots so they need to try and quieten her down a, a bit if they want to build this lead. And changes for the tactics this quarter. Anna Galvin goes to the bench. Alec Kite moves from goal defence to goal keep. And Victoria Smith comes on at goal defence. Oh, Irene Van Dyke just signalling to her teammate. Bit higher, mate. And she was certainly justified. So a defensive change in tactics colours. Which is a good move, Andrew, because offensively they were shooting enough ball, but they just weren't slowing them down in defence and Galvin came on it was clear that she hadn't played at this level for a number of weeks so good move by Marn Stroud Thompson a fine start to this third spell and the magic away again Solia uses Williams big cross court and there's the front cut again Jody Brown, fine stuff again from the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic. And joining us in commentary now, the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic coach, Nolene Taurua. And Nolene, the message to your team at halftime. Yeah, this is a big third quarter for us. Um, Final execution in the attacking end, finishing things off, and defensively stop them from coming towards the ball. Nolan, we thought maybe in defence you might try a couple of options just to see what the best replacement is for Scholes. You weren't tempted to put Shadrock out there? Yeah, that's hopefully coming in the last quarter. There's definitely a couple of options up the sleeve, but we'll, I just want to get this third quarter over and consolidate ourselves. Thanks, Nolan. Thank you. Tactics trying to consolidate now as Bowden feeds Mitchell on the baseline. That wonderful, sneaky baseline drive, Ange Mitchell. And finishes, so a good start to this third spell from the visitors, the Canterbury Tactics. Langman combining beautifully with Jody Brown. There's another. Bowden and Thompson, a lovely combination from those two as well. And Thompson will finish. And with us in commentary now, the Canterbury Tactics assistant coach, Julie Seymour. Lovely to have you with us, Jules. And the message from you and Helen to your side at halftime. Yeah, well, um, in um, phases, we're doing fine. Um, there's some nice movement down there, and Anna's finishing it off at the end for us. Um, probably just need to stem the flow of ball for the Magic, though. Um, they've been bringing the ball down very fast, and Jody and Irene have been finishing it off. So would like to get our hands on the ball a bit more defensively. What's the belief in the camp, Julie? Do you actually come out in this third quarter believing that you can actually win this game, or is it simply trying to modify some areas that you're lacking? 
I think that we um, we come out here and we just concentrate on one play at a time, really. Um, you focus and we've got the ball, we want to take it down and score it. Um, and when they've got the ball, you're doing your darndest to get it off them. So, you know, not being score focused, but, you know, being in the moment, I guess. Thanks, Jules. No probs. Well, lovely, astute words from the tactics assistant coach, Julie Seymour. She was a magnificent player, and I'd imagine she's pretty good to have on your coaching staff as well. Finch, big long ball, finds Marie Bowden, and the bullet to Thompson. It could have been sensational. Should have been sensational. Soft hands then by Thompson. So now it's the magic marching through misunderstanding, though. Good pressure there from Victoria Smith. Force that turnover. And Finch sneaks her way through two magic defenders. They try again. Some lovely touches on for the Canterbury Tactics. They just have to keep on keeping on. Simple feed on this occasion, though. Yeah, she's on Song Thompson. Shooting really well here this afternoon and probably has done so for most part of the season. Well, you wonder, too, how much of a difference it makes being back at goal shoot. Not easy shooting over those long limbs of Waititi and Williams. A good sign. Nick Smith combines with Ange Mitchell and the throw in to the Magic. So a bit of bad luck there at Canterbury Tactics. They haven't quite mastered those little no. bounces yet, those two. Defensively, they're impossible to get, but beautiful piece of play. They make you pay the Magic sometimes. One into the other, blink of an eye. Jodie Brown's playing like a globetrotter. Langman now uses Solia centre pass, and there's that ball speed, really sublime. She comes out of nowhere. <laughs> she didn't even move her feet. That was a washing machine dodge. Just moved her upper half. We're always told it's about timing in this game. That was a classic example. And perhaps a new technical term to be introduced into the game there. The Annie. Jiggle. The washing machine dodge. Out and uses Thompson. And that pretty much sums up the tactics afternoon, really. It looked like it could have been so good, but it wasn't. So now the magic. I'm not sure what that is, Irene Van Dyke, but she's having fun. Langman sets again. Give and go, they've got to cut that off. It should be on the inside, on the wrong side then. Yeah, Langman certainly all over Finch in that same position. And as an opposition centre, Annie, what can you do to try and stem that? Well, I think she needs, she needs to set up the three foot on her, not give Langman so much room, and pick her up as soon as she passes the ball. So you're actually directing her, and I think Finch is sort of getting caught, letting Langman do what she wants and chasing her. Tactics nicely through court. These good straight lines that we've seen today, the basics done well with this tactic side. Tactics are getting enough ball, there's no doubt about that. It's just defensively, they're really loose. And Mitchell, the former Silver Fern, who finds herself back in the ANZ action, having a fine game at goal attack for the Canterbury Tactics. I know at the start of the game, you know, questions asked about whether she should get the start, but she's delivered. She has. She was put on a couple of weeks ago at goal shooter, which was, she was very difficult for, to find because she's so slight, whereas goal attack, she can use her movement. And the combination with Thompson is working out quite well for this tactic side. And she's a player that's played for the, the Canterbury Province for the tactics before, so often it's nice to get a familiar face in that knows the team, knows the management, slips in with ease, and, and that's what Mitchell can do. Yeah, yeah. So, the goal attack wasn't using the top, she was using the wide, and then they were passing cutting wide, yeah. and we were a panel. Yeah, they were. If we come, if everyone's got a we side, remember, we need to shuffle over and yeah. reorientate where the ball's coming down. You can also test the special code that was being walked around the... Got to do it together, okay? Can't do it in little pockets and isolation. It's got to be done together, okay? Talk. I know you're tired. Talk. You're not, so you're the talker, okay? Want to hear you out there. On your phone, talk. On the next one, next phase. Here we go. 
Well, it's just wonderful listening in on those injury breaks, isn't it? One of the really good developments, if you like, in ANZ this year, that the coaches can actually coach during those injury breaks. Scoot words from Man Stroud, too. She's noting that Brown is getting the ball wide, and then it's the likes of Langman are getting the ball and giving and going wide as well. So she's asking her whole team to shuffle over so that Langman can't do that give and go. Well, it must have been a frustrating job for her this year, coach Helen Man Stroud. She really just hasn't had things go her way. And remember, it's her reputation on the line. Yeah, denied an import in Joe Harton from England, which I think they could have done with. And injuries galore, this tactic side, so they've just had to rustle up a starting seven each week. And even Mitchell only came in a few weeks ago because of Chelsea Pittman's serious knee injury. Yeah, and you mentioned the last time Ange Mitchell played it was at goal shoot. She'd only been with the side for two days, so it's a pretty big ask to go out in this ANZ Championship arena after that. Thompson, she's been on song all day. So about halfway through this third quarter, it's often a decisive one. Yeah, the Magic want to build here because they had an eight-goal buffer at quarter time. They're only ten goals up now, so they haven't made too many inroads. Off the ring, but Van Dijk is just such a great rebounder. And both teams running at 87 and 86 on the shooting numbers. Crofts used on the transverse line. Good front cut, Bowden, great feed. Casey Williams really wonders whether she should have been penalised. She thought she had well, she her timing going nicely. Yeah, spectacular pass, Bowden. So the Magic again, just trying to rework it. Get a bit of a spark going in this third spell. Yeah, they've just dropped off those quick feeds, haven't they, in the past quarter and a bit, so they want to lift their work rate in that area. That's what worked for them in the first quarter. Bowden now, and Thompson's doing a nice mm. job coming out of the circle at goal shoot. It's a combination worth watching, that's for sure. Mitchell over the arms of Casey Williams. It was always a challenge for Waititi. She'd prefer a taller player. It's not always easy for a defender who's six foot or so to mark up against someone quite a bit shorter. Yeah, what are the differences and, and what are the things that you have to do to amend your game as a defender? Well, particularly in this competition, you just don't come up against a mobile shooter anymore. They're all well over six foot two these days, so that's all you're used to. So you have to amend your game quite dramatically, Andrea, and it's not easy to do, particularly when you're always looking over your shoulder. And Thompson is a very smooth mover, so it's pretty tough. It's about keeping your head in the right position and not letting it sway too much. Oh, so close, Casey Williams. You can just sense that she's going to get a deflection anytime soon. Hustle and bustle on the centre pass, but Brown again on the wing attack side. Camps out there quite a bit. Well, she certainly acts as the, the third feeder, Jodie Brown. Always looking for Van Dijk. And pretty much always finding her. Yeah. It's what you want. Thompson now resets on the transverse line. One of the signatures of this tactic side, good patient attacking team. Yes, they haven't made too many major errors, have they? That was good patience from Bowden, letting the ball dribble closer to the circle edge. Thompson comes up short. And surprise, surprise, Casey Williams gets the rebound. Jodie Todd now through court. She's been used through court a lot today, Todd. Doing a fine job at wing defence, not a usual position. And there's the Canterbury tactics this time, hand to it and oh. regathering. <laughs> Brown a bit over enthusiastic. But what a penalty like that does is just slow things down and gives her defensive unit a, time, a chance to set up. Professional fouls, isn't it? At least they're using the low ball. Sometimes you can still get sucked into using the high ball, but they've obviously decided to follow the coach's instructions. Which would be pretty pleasing for a coach, you'd imagine, you would think. Well, I think they've been doing it for the past six weeks. No. <laughs> yeah, six straight losses, the Canterbury Tactics. Six straight wins, the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic. So two very different journeys into this one. 
is that sideline path again, Major Kenna. Oh. Sensational pass. A beautiful fake, Francis Solia. Magnificent. Nothing you can do about that. Look one way through the other. Oh. And Bowden does the same. Don't want you to take all the limelight, Francis. That was a brilliant feed. Beautiful Just vision, there, didn't it? Stunning. Practice that at training, I'd suggest. Well, lovely work off the ball, too, and a Thompson. Good up to go back, as they call it. Solia now on the hot spot. Oh, well done, Kai. It's, it's interesting watching Kai now. She knows they're putting in that fast port of Van Dyke, so even if her eyes aren't on the ball, she's still putting her hands in the air. So I guess you could say that's smart. She's I getting a hand to it. <laughs> well, strong footwork, too, taking the extra step so that she can get her hand to it. But gee, it's quick. Van Dyke now sets the penalty and notches up another. Charlotte Kite perhaps appealing to the umpire suggests it goes both ways. It probably does, Charlotte, but you're not wearing white. <laughs> Just a misunderstanding, so another turnover. Yeah, Bowden's had a few loose ones go. Rain that in. And the two and a half minutes remaining in this third quarter, perhaps a sense that the Magic are about to put the foot down. Big one to Solia. Offside. And the call will be offside. So brave stuff, Philippa Finch. And they'll just wait for the court to get wiped up because perspiration, of course, pretty slippery. Yeah, well seen. Easy feed over the top. No pressure on Van Dyke then. Right smile from Langman. Probably wondering to herself why she didn't see it sooner. Casey Williams. Well, we've seen her at goal kick, but gee, she's pretty handy on attack too. Yeah, the only thing about Williams playing at goal defence is in this competition, as I said, all the shooters are extremely tall and she matches up well against them. So you, the team of the Magic is losing out a lot with Magic with Williams at goal defence. Solia now. She'll look for the easy pass in. Doesn't need to though. Kite's penalised for contact. So this will be an easy one for Van Dyke. Last three goals, Waikato Bay, plenty magic. Oh, oh. lucky there. <laughs> what a stanza of play. Lucky but unlucky. Thompson did look to break back into the circle, but the feeders didn't pick that up. Oh. And every time the tactics have come up short, it's been that Williams woman. Not bad on the rebound, is she? Not bad at all, Kath. And in the exchange between Crofts and Solia, you'd have to say Solia's been the winner in that one. Mm. Haven't really noticed Hayley Crofts. No. Lovely feed. Ah, oh, doesn't come off though, and it's Finch who picks up the scraps. Bowden in the pocket. doing her best while she's out of play. Yeah, just dropped off a bit in their shooting over the last few minutes of tactics. It's costing them. YTT now on the charge. Look out for that long ball in a minute. Yeah, well, Langman's calling for it, isn't she? And there it is. And you saw that none of the tactics girls had their arms Here up. They need to put their vision block up. And the crowd counting down. Three more time. Oh, are for a long shot or not? No. No, the penalty must have been outside the circle. So that is the end of the third quarter here at Mystery Creek in Hamilton. It's been one where the home side, the Magic, have really had the edge. They'll go to the last break ahead 51 to 38. We're back live with the fourth quarter action very shortly, live here on Sky Sport. Three-quarter 
full-time entertainment here at Mystery Creek in Hamilton, where it's been the home side who've been wholly dominant so far. They lead by 13, 51 to 38, the score. And a bit of a surprise change in Magic Colours. Jess Tukey, who we're used to seeing at goal shoot and goal attack, is on at goal keep. It's a fair ask for a player at the elite level to ask her to move from one end of the court to the other, Andrew. But obviously she's been putting in some good work at training. And what better time to try that combination than now when they've got a good buffer against the tactics. Okay, be interesting to see how she combines with Casey Williams. They're very good friends off the court, so I think the combination on the court could be quite special. Time will tell. And the other player you're seeing on your screen, Hannah Poff, on centre for the Canterbury Tactics. So changes galore, changes all over the court. Ellen Halpenny on. I think we might leave it till we get into game time in our sideline. I, Anna Stanley, can talk us through them all. I certainly can. Anna Thompson's moved in to goal attack. Ellen Halpenny's come in at goal shoot. Finch has moved to wing, wing defence. And Hannah Pock in at centre. And for the Magic, Jess Tookie, goal keep. So changes galore. But just one for this Magic side. The front line remains the same. And gee, we've enjoyed watching them play. Brown starts. And she's played all game, really, with a smile on her face and a strong shot at goal. So we're having a preview of another option in defence for the Magic. You wonder what else they've got up their sleeve. There has been talk, but the Eng English wing defence, Jade Clark, is an option for them. And we wonder if they'll look at that if they'll stay in-house. So only time will tell. And, it, and interesting that they've put Tuki in at goal keep. We've seen her at goal attack early on in the season for the Magic. So... She's showing her versatility to be able to come out and play in that defensive position. And she started the first game of the season at goal attack. Oh, sorry, goal shoot. That's Van Tyke out at goal attack. So she's been all over the court. I just wonder about that, though, if Tuki came up against an Aitken or a Borrego, whether or not a lack of court time in that position. Well, I must admit, her, question. her strength as a shooter was certainly her rebounding. Uh, you'd always bank on her getting her, her missed shot so you never know how she goes and, and it goal kick. Well, not a bad start pretty nice exchange we just saw Tuki have a go at it and <laughs> she intercepts the shot so take a bow that's why she's at goal kick <laughs> both players out now and Thompson Throw it. Oh, this is Take a look. Again. That's not easy to do, I can assure you. Spent my whole Christ. career trying to do that, Andrea. That's unbelievable, Jess Tookie. Oh, she's, uh, so she's got great elevation, and that's that's the first thing that you need to be able to do one of those. A whole lot of timing and coordination, though, which I must say some defenders don't have. Particularly the coordination. A blow to the eye, Irene Van Dyke, but we're kind of used to seeing Van Dyke in the wars. She only needs one eye anyway. <laughs> no call her eyes for nothing. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, I think. And the Thompson now. And Jess Tukey pressuring the shot. Thompson, nice clean shot. 54 to 40. The score is, the score is 12 and a half minutes left in this match. Van Dyke out of the circle. <laughs> she combines with Solia eventually. Langman. Another one of those super passes. And she finishes. Bowden. Oh. Nothing wrong with that, Jess Tukey. She saw it and she went hunting. Thought it was Casey Williams. Notice the difference in the ponytails. <laughs> Catherine, <laughs> seems to be your theme of the day. Solia now and Van Dyke, brilliant on the baseline. Just the amount of work that Van Dyke does off the ball, it's really brilliant. Brown now with Galvin penalised and it dribbles in. I guess if you want to analyse the performance of the Magic defensive unit over the first three quarters with the Waititi goalkeeper, the Tactics still managed to score 38 goals, which is a pretty good return. So they certainly do need to look at other options. And it's not singling out Waititi, but just the defensive combination. 
Thompson's had a fine performance. She's back out to goal attack, but she played a great first three quarters at goal shoot. Solia now uses Williams. And this lovely patience. Even when Van Dyke's out of the circle. Oh, and it's the fastest I've seen Van Dyke run. <laughs> there she likes it. <laughs> She's like, look at me, I can do more than just shoot. Well, that was a gimme. Laura Langman, turnover though. She's been brilliant this game, Langman. Done terrific things defensively, but just as good in, in attack. Oh, her feeding really improved, hasn't it? Special player, Laura Langman, is to Irene Van Dyke. And what's two passes. Just stunning magic. Now circle edge, Langman, they'll go again. And a nicely weighted pass into Van Dyke. Finishing off nicely here, the magic. It's always a good way to go into the training week and a strong fourth quarter performance. Jodie Todd has a go against Bowden, and it's another gimme. So Ellen Helpini, she's not used to coming on as an impact player, if you like, and she's been pretty unsettled so far. Langman now charges through the middle. Penalty will go against Poff, interfering. Need to be outside 0.9 of a metre. She certainly wasn't. Ah. What a lovely combination between Brown and Van Dyke. We've seen it all from them today. Now, when they're on song, they're pretty to watch. <laughs> I think that's the up and over. This time, Jody Brown on the baseline. So last five goals, the Magic, they're putting the foot down. And surprise, surprise, time called any. One of the tactics players, was it? Yep, Anna Galvin. She's an old fox, Anna. She'll know that Magic have got on a bit of a roll here. And they just need to take stock and get a little powwow with each other. So round nine, girls, talk to me about the encouraging signs from this Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic outfit. They've got Steel, then Firebirds and Swift, so three really important weeks coming up for them. And today, they've played magnificently. They have. Look, they've certainly shown that they're right up there in terms of challenging for this championship. Um, but they do have some tough games ahead, and they'll need to be on song over the next few weeks. But my interest lies with who's going to replace Peter Scholes, because I'm not sure that Tuki is the answer. I'm not sure that Waititi is. I think they really miss out it by putting... Williams out into goal defence. For the tactics, well, their next three, Pulse, Thunderbirds, Steel, they've had such an unhappy season. They've been riddled with injury. They were denied a second import from Joe Hart, and uh, really just has been a sad old year for the girls wearing red and black. Your old colours, Anna. I know, and it's sad to see, but it, it is just one of those years where just when you're a player, you just want to thank God, when's, when's the end of the season? You know, they have had, as you say, just a huge amount of bad luck, and it's unfortunate because they do have some real quality players in their, in their side, but they just haven't quite managed to get it together this year. Now, I think the area they show they're lacking is in this game, you need a massive target in at goal shooter. Hal Penny's done a reasonable job, but hasn't had the high percentages. They've got to find a gun shooter if they're going to be competitive. Just wiping the boards, getting rid of the perspiration on the deck. And then Hannah Poff will get us underway again. So just under nine minutes remaining in this match, and Jess Tuki, we've, we've seen Coach Nolin Taurua throw all sorts of spanners. You'd have to say Tuki at goalkeeper is probably the biggest one yet, but gee, she's going well. Penalised for distance, so the big long arms of Casey Williams will go over instead. No trouble for Emma Thompson. Eight and a half minutes now, 61 to 44. The Magic really just tightening their grip on this fourth spell. Solia Circle Edge uses her mid-court buddy and Langman and Jody Brown converts from the baseline. The biggest margin between these two has been 25 goals and there have been some real close ones, two and four. Oh, Ooh, that looked painful. Yeah, Bowden's been going to the sideline a bit whenever there's been timeouts and, and putting ice on her, it looks like her Achilles or calf, and she may just have a bit of a, a sore Achilles there. You can see she slid in an awkward position. So 
doesn't look very comfortable, does she? Oh, that sort of a landing is never fun. And this is a scene you never want to watch, a player hobbling to the sideline. And it's the last thing the Canterbury Tactics need. She seems to know it's serious. Sometimes players give, them, give themselves some time. But she's straight off the court. Not good. So you'll see all sorts of bibs going onto all sorts of people. Uh, so Finch, Finch is going into centre and Poff moves to wing attack. It's interesting at this stage of the season you'd be wanting to look at a settled lineup. Canterbury tactics are far from that. And straight into it, the Magic's it catching the bit, opponents out. It was a bit rough. Oh, the players they weren't even in position. No, they didn't even wait for them. And now Langman's calling time. Looks like she's going to come off yeah, too. Yeah, there's a plan move here. Yeah. Here we go. Shadrock was ready on the bench. Just she's happened to have her centre yeah, on. <laughs> and we've talked all day about whether or not Eli Shadrock will be injected into the game. We probably didn't expect her to be injected at centre. And Langman, she's wearing. Langman may well go to wing defence. Certainly looks that way. So, gee, what a big afternoon for Eli Shadrock. She's a local girl born in Tokoroa, went to school in Rotorua. She's played for New Zealand secondary schools, New Zealand under-21 squad, so a player of real pedigree. And she's just 19 years old. She's given her a big rap, saying she has a good understanding of the game. She doesn't mind speaking her mind. As Langman said, it took her and Casey two years before they talk amongst the senior players. I think it took them more than that. <laughs> yeah, that's because they had to deal with the likes of you. Frightening. Come on. Solia now. And just the little pop from Van Dyke. She just does everything so well. What a class act. Philippa Finch now. Canterbury Tactics forced to jiggle their lineup again. Marie Bowden on the sideline. So Finch drives onto the circle edge and good angles. Thompson offloads. And Jess took it again. She's had wonderful timing on the on the defense of the shot. Oh. She's one of these players, Tookie, that when you look at her, she's athletic, she's got great elevation, she's got some great skills, but she's never really found a position that she could call her own. Perhaps until now, Annie. Maybe. And she really got the yips, didn't she, with her shooting? She was yeah. a quite an accurate shooter, suddenly started missing and has never regained her confidence. So then, they so then they turned her into a wing attack and she tried wing attack for a while and, and now, well, she's giving the goal keep position a whirl. Well, this... Possession Canterbury tactics it came from silky skills, Charlotte Kite. <laughs> what a lean. Let me take a look at the turn. Look at that. Wonderful skills and coordination. Good backup from her teammate, Anna Galvin. And Helpini slots another. So last three goals to the tactics, just as the magic settle into this new on-court combination. Oh. What a feed! Hey, hey! <laughs> well, she's come with big raps, has Eli Shadrock. No wonder. Picked as a New Zealand secondary school player in defence. Now finds herself in the mid-court. Probably a height issue, but that was brilliant. Thompson looks for pop, but just a misunderstanding. Oh, she wants to take the throw in from the centre third, is Eli. Exciting time for the youngster. Solia now resettles, oh. accidentally regathers. Fantastic hands from Brown. She hardly had control of that and she tipped it to Solia. And Solia in turn, just in the flick of an eye. Galvin out hunting, gets a hand to it. I want to continue to build here the magic, build some percentage. The lead is starting to blow out now. Shadrock, new player on court. Uses Brown at the head of the circle. And Brown's so patient. You know, she's got the bullet pass, but when required, Jody Brown will wait just till the time's right. Some filthy skills she has. Thompson now for the tactics, helping you out of the circle. 
and they reset. Pop circle edge this time. Oh dear, and players are all over that shot. Just a bit of an exchange, I think, between Williams of and course, Thompson. Of course, neither of them probably want to call time because then you have to go off the court because the Magic, they've already had one time out. Instead, they just ride around a while. Yeah. <laughs> Take their time getting up. In the meantime, Jodie Brown will set the penalty. It's under Galvin penalised. Plenty of penalties for the tactics. They are one of the, team, one of the teams in the competition that are penalised quite a bit. I think that's because they're always chasing. That's what happens when you're down the bottom of the ladder. Thompson, one of the players wearing red and black, who really has had a fine time on court. And there goes Langman again. She's moved to wing defence and hand to it almost straight away. Big swing ball. Oh, Shad Rock Jacket just, I think, had moved on to the next phase of play before she'd passed it. Lovely feed this time. Laura Langman, she really has been all over the court, as has Jodie Brown. A consistent 60 minutes of netball from the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic, no doubt about it. It's Poff and her Canterbury Tactics teammates try to finish strongly to take something out of this match. Halpenny. Good finishing. The pleasing thing for the Magic, Andrea, is that this is their highest score for the season. Their previous high score was just 56. So this will do their confidence the world of good. Oh, gosh. Well, Van Dyke tried to scoop it in, suggesting the penalty should have gone her way. Now we've a throwing turnover time. Oh, no. She has done it all this hour, Irene Van Dyke. Been in great form, Van Dyke. Crowd love it, and so they should. It's been a real netball spectacle here in Hamilton this afternoon. Off now for the tactics, and good baseline drive, Alan Helpini. Just her third game, Poff, so she'd be relishing the opportunity out there. Right, right, right. Brown just. Hovering and having to go back. Shadrock looking quite at home. Beautiful work, Van Dyke. Yeah, great dodge. Gee, the tackers will be disappointed in this. They weren't travelling too badly since quarter time, but the score has really blown out. The Magic are on song. And good to see. The Magic really do need to put their foot down now. They want to remain in the top four. They've got a few big games to come, so good to see that they're sort of starting to hit their straps midway through this competition. Poff sets the penalty, uses Finch circle edge. All sorts of magic hands in on the action. Help any the pop though. A bit of a lucky rebound, really. Jess Tuki got her hand to it, but it fell nicely for Helpenny. And now Thompson will take the penalty. So into the last 30 seconds of this match, time for the Magic to notch up another. Thompson call, so they will have another opportunity. Great mid-court defence, Philippa Finch. Kite transverse line, and the countdown begins. Thompson, oh, she shot beautifully all our heads. Thompson, but it won't be enough. It's been the home side, the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic, who prevailed, and they've done so in style, 72 to 52. A 20-goal blowout. 
And this result is exactly what the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic needed at this stage of proceedings. Yeah, without question, Andrew, there's been some questions on the number of attempts they've put in during the games, but today it was their highest score ever in the ANZ Championship. So what better way to lead into three tough weeks of competition for this local side? There's been so much talk about how the Magic would respond without their inspiration or input, Peter Scholes, you'd have to say very well. Yeah, they probably did a lot of soul searching during the week. Peter's a massive part of their unit, but they realise they need to group together to forge ahead, and they've certainly done this, so they'll be very pleased with the outcome here this afternoon. Well, let's get the thoughts now of the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic captain, Laura Langman. She's standing by with her old Laura, teammate, Anna Stanley. Well, Laura, that was a much more polished performance from the Magic. You must be happy with, with what you put out today. Yeah, it was great. Um, obviously disappointed um, that we couldn't have Peter, but um, the others really stepped up and very proud of them. A hard week for you, losing Pete. She was a, a, a bit of a star player in your team. And we saw a bit of a change in the magic down that defensive end. Just, just took a unit goal keep. Yeah, Tooks, um, I think she's our wild card. You know, she's actually natural down there, so I'm really looking forward to seeing her developments down there as a keeper. She got some great defensive shots, so, you know, that was good to see. Hey, all the best and good luck for the next few weeks. Thanks, Annie. Yeah, Jess Tookie, we talk about wild cards. Now, you're a former defender, Kat. She did blink and well she there. She did, but the big test, Andrea, is not against Ellen Halpenny. It's against the likes of Wipoyeti, but further down the track, Catherine Cox uh, and also Borrego. That will be the real test for someone like Jess Tookie. Good to see encouraging signs, though. OK, let's hear from the losing captain now, Marie Bowden. Gee, she has some fortitude. She went off injured. She's now sidelined with Anna Stanley. Well, Grubby, hard luck. Eight goals down after that first quarter. You were sort of chasing them for the rest of the game, weren't you? Yeah, we were. Yeah, we can't be chasing teams of this level. And, yeah, it's so disappointing. We seem to stick with them and then, uh, yeah, just let it go. But um, they're a class team and it was a good performance. There was a lot of heart out there, so that's all I can ask for. A positive, though, your shooters performed ad admirably today. It was just defensively. You just couldn't quite stem the flow of that magic side. No, they were really quick on attack and they've got really great links and it was really hard. The ball was going over our defenders' heads at some time. But, um, yeah, attack, it felt really good out there. So that's a positive. Um, we're looking forward to building for next week. Well, good luck and hope the injury is OK. Cool. Thanks, Annie. So the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic, a much-needed win and a much-needed big margin. 20 goals it's been. They've defeated the Canterbury Tactics 72-52. to 52. Back to wrap it up shortly. Live Sky Sport. On court brings you the best of the week. Court brings you the fam. Oh yeah. Go and miss it. On court takes you inside the games. Let's take a closer look. See how Baden's landed. We'll help you out with your game. Your game. The split. My favourite. Come on, join us on court. 7.30 Wednesday on Sky Sport. Go on, you know you want to. <laughs> Welcome back to Mystery Creek here in Hamilton where the Waikato Magic, Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic have just thumped the Canterbury Tactics 72 to 52. So 20 goals, a much better polished performance from the Magic. And let's take a look and see who came away with player of the match. And well, there were no questions there. Laura Langman was outstanding, especially with her feeds into Van Dyke today. She turned and look in, looked in confident right from the start. She picks up the three points. Irene Van Dyke was certainly on song in that shooting end. And here's the leaderboard, the player of the year leaderboard. Megan Dean is leading the stakes at the moment. The Southern Steel shooter, Byfield from the Mystics, joins her. And Casey Williams, she was outstanding today here for the Magic. And Timmy Parra George from the Mystics picks up um, in that top four position. So Catherine Harvey Williams, the Magic, a lot more polished than what we saw last week against the Pulse. A terrific performance, Annie. Annie, the best I've seen. It's their highest score in the ANZ competition since it started. Irene Van Dyke was absolutely superb. As you said, well fed by Laura Langman but a very pleasing result for the Magic because they do have a hard few weeks ahead. And very pleasing considering they lost their star wing defender last week, Peter Scholes. We saw an interesting move from Nolene Taroa. Jess Tookie, who we normally used to seeing down the other end of the court in the shooting end, came on at goal keep. It'll be interesting to see if she continues with that. They play the steal next week. She could be up against Wipoyeti, but only time will tell what happens. Well, that's it from us here at Mystery Creek in Hamilton. We'll see you soon.
Sky Netball team styled by Ketski.